as well as he'll be walking through a scenario of, of completing a work order for you. Now we'll present today, we'll be presenting it from two applications, both from the desktop, and that's where I'm showing you today. And then I'll be moving into my mobile device. So if there's anything else along the way that you want us to be able to kind of lean on or be able to express for you, I can happy to, I'm quite malleable, I'm happy to be able to show that for you. So just as a starting point to kind of give you a little bit of a bearing as to what we're showing, um, this isn't necessarily something that you would access every day, but this is the Dynamics 365 portal that I'm showing you. So on the second row, the um, and in the second and third columns, here you can see that there's two field service applications. So someone like saying a customer service agent or someone that would be accessing it through a mobile device that really needs to see a more holistic view of all of the information can access through the, the customer service application. And then there's the field service mobile, which is a little bit more of a condensed view of the field service application, more transactional for a someone that's and that's mobile that would be executing on site either from an account management or a technician point of view so we'll be able to show both of those scenarios today as we move between two applications so the first tab i have open is the field service application and you can see that identified by the um, upper left hand corner and what we wanted to show you is be able to how to create a work order now there's two different ways that i can do that in the upper right hand corner, I can click on the plus sign, which is a quick create. It's a modified form that you can customize to whatever information that is critical to be able to create a work order. So it's, it's very fast. So especially if you're on the phone or if you're on the go, um, you can be able to do that from here. Secondly, we're going to move over to the left where you can see the work order entity. And this is where I'm actually going to walk through creating a work order for you. And here I can see all my current active work orders. If there's anything that I wanted to be able to drill down and see any consistencies in, in work orders. So I'm going to click again that plus sign. And now I have a more full, robust um, vision of a work order. And the business process ribbon pops up for you. Um, and so when you go back into here, you can be able to see what phase you're in, what information you're capturing for that work order. So I'm just going to walk through um, all of the asterisk all the fields that have a red asterisk beside it, those are the things that are critical that I can hit save on and be able to initiate this work order. Um, and again, we can be able to modify that to suit your needs. So here I'm going to enter in, um, well, hypothetically say it was from an email that I got, PMHC being my customer. I'm going to associate, so sorry, pulling up the billing account. Um, if there's any sub statuses that I want to be able to acknowledge, I had that capability. So if initially it's saying that it's unscheduled, and here I can build identify, say, if there's any estimates or um, follow ups that need to happen regarding this, if I'm waiting for parts, um, I can be able to uh, add a, a sub status to that. I'm going to be able to identify the work order type. So it is going to be a diagnosis, uh, sorry, an install and replace. And any other information that's important. One other thing that's really important to identify here is the primary incident type. So I'm going to identify that it is an installation and re repair. So it's through a template. It's already indicating the, uh, the expected effort it would take to, conclu to conclude this work order um, in, a, in, in, a, in a, a functional area. So it's like if, if there's any other difficulties that happen along the way, then it would be um, <clears throat> a little bit more time required. I'm quickly going to hit save here. And now it's creating that work order and it's, it's activating a couple business processes for me. So it's activating those, those service tasks that need to uh, come forward, it's calculating that. And now I can be able to see in the middle that I actually have a timeline that's appearing. So from this perspective, I could launch a phone call or an email um, indicating that we received the order and that it's been actioned for them. It could be an automated function. Or in this scenario, I do want to add a note and I'm going to attach an image, <clears throat> an image that came in through the email that I had saved. I'm going to save this sensor. Uh, and I'm going to add that note. So this way, I would go to the technician on site to be able to see that there is an error here. Now, what I want to be able to do is, when I look at this business process, I can look at all of the critical pieces of information that needs to be captured. And it's all looking successful. But before I move it over into the next stage, indicating that it's ready to be scheduled, I just want to make sure that uh, some of the other settings is set for this. So especially when we look at preferences, if someone has indicated that they have a preferred start window, um, that they would like the attendant to, uh, to be on site, or something that we promised them. So I am going to indicate that it's going to happen today. 
and they want us to come after hours. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I'm going to indicate, and you can already see that it's already starting to pull um, the the initial time that's needed for that. And again, especially if there's any other parent-child relationships, I can be able to indicate that here. Just to scoot across, I can indicate my product. It's already starting to pull what product I'm going to need based on that requirement. And now if I look at my service tasks, it's now starting to actually show um, what the stages or the tasks associated to this work order is and um, what the order of operation is to execute. So again, I can be able to modify this um, as needed for a customer and to this work order. So one other thing I wanted to show you before we um, schedule this is I want to be able to move into the related entity. And as I scroll down, I want to look at my resource preferences to make sure that the right resource is being allocated to this. And here I can be able to see that I do have resources, uh, preferred resources for this customer in that territory. So Abraham is a user being a, a being a, a, an associate of Burkhart. But here I can be able to see that uh, Alejandro and Spencer aren't users, they could potentially be contacts, which would be maybe a third party vendor. Really beneficial, especially in, in remote areas or, or scenarios where you don't have a lot of technicians in that area, that if you need to utilize a third party vendor, you would need know who a preferred vendor or company would be um, for this territory and for this individual company. Any questions on what I've showed you quite quickly in creating a work order? So not a lot of fields to enter, but I can really want to show you just all of the other information that can be populated for you as an automation. Great. So here I am going to move it to the next stage, which is going to, oh, I have a slight problem here. So what I would just normally do is I would save this, it would move to the schedule work order, and now it would give an indicator to um, any other uh, customer service agents or um, individuals looking at this work order and be able to understand its service, its status, sorry. Now in the way of scheduling, I have two ways to be able to schedule a work order. I could be able to click this book button on my taskbar, which is then going to take my preferred resources and be able to look at for that time frame who's available and automatically book that for me. But just to help with the more consol um, a wider viewpoint of that, I am going to go into the scheduling board. Uh, try one more time. Oh, I have a problem. You can see here on the error bar, I didn't see that earlier, sorry. That the time promise is later than the time um, promise, so I'm just going to go back into uh, my settings, sorry. Ah, oh, 8 a.m. So it's already making sure, it's already indicating that I made an error here. There we go. I'm going to save and close that. <clears throat> Great. So I can now see that um, my work order 42 has been created. If I pop over to the schedule board, so again, it could be different individuals that might actually dispatch a, a work order, or it could be um, could be anywhere from a dispatcher or a technician that could be able to allocate that depending on your territory and your needs. So upon creating the, uh, opening up the schedule board, I can see here what all my unscheduled work orders are at the bottom of the screen and be able to see what needs to be actioned. If I click on this, there's really two ways that I can be able to schedule a work On this initially, I can be able, it's taking all of the requirements that are in the work order and from that account, and I could be able to find the availability. The other action is if I were to, um, to, to, to click, just, sorry, I'm stammering for a second. If I want to be able to click and drag this to an appropriate time or person that I wanted to satisfy this, I can be able to do that as well. But we are going to use the associated filters, um, or the associated scheduling for this to be able to allocate that. So by clicking on the find availability tab, it's now going to run the resources um, and the characteristics required for this work order. And it's starting to look at all my resources, within a 100 mile radius of this customer, the time that's been promised to them, because it is after hours, um, it is pulling uh, what the characteristics and the rating is required to satisfy this opportunity, this work order, my territory and my contact. So it's then starting to look. So there's no one available within these parameters. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cancel this and I do wanna drill down and I wanna look at Spencer's calendar and I can be able to see that he is working um, until 
7 p.m. in that evening, and it's for Coho. But I can also see the previous work orders that he's working on that he's already at PMHC um, earlier in the day. So he's already in the area. Um, and so it kind of makes sense, and he's in Alvin's chipmunk um, next. So it kind of makes sense for maybe to me to move this work order and reallocate this to someone else. So what I will do is I'll take this work order and I'll click and I'll drag it and I'll put it into the start time of 5 p.m. There we go. <laughs> Just takes a moment to render there. Um, and then I'm going to allocate that and I'm going to reassociate this to some, reassign this to someone else. So as easy as that, I can be able to drill down and click and drag this to a resource that I want uh, to be able to execute this work order, or I can be able to look at, um, from a filter point of view, what's available. Now, something else I wanted to identify is um, once I look at, say, a potentially a different opportunity, and I run the characteristics on that, So again, I can be able to see that Alejandro is available and you can see the, the amount of time and space that's available for him. So I can easily just click the book button and it would automatically allocate that to him. So it's really great using that um, assisted scheduling. So one other thing I wanted to show before leaving here is I'm just gonna cancel the search. So it's gonna remove um, Alejandro from this for the moment. And I wanted to look at the map view. So again, if I wanted to look at it from a different perspective, I can look at a map and I could be able to see based on the clicking on this opportunity where the organization is on a map. And I could be able to also be able to see what resources are in the area. So again, from a visual point of view, and I can be able to see uh, the roadside or an aerial view and be able to give some insight as to what would be the best way um, to schedule out a work order. So it does give you a lot of flexibility and visibility here. Any, in, any questions in regards to creation or scheduling a work order? There have been a couple on, online, but they're they're being taken care of, so you're good. Okay, great. Hey, Thank Deborah, you. this Deborah, this is Shannon. Um, what what drives the billing? The billing, certainly. So, like, what like what field? Like, what field when they fill out a work order when they're creating it? What what might drive the billing part of it? Certainly. It, so. Um, if, I, if I just move to the, the bottom left hand corner of the screen, there's a change area and I can be able to look at my resources. So when I set up my resources, I would allocate their characteristics, what their skill set, their proficiency, as well as based on the tasks, what their billable rate, rate would be. Okay. And because so we're associating that to the individual and the type of work, we can be able to configure that um, to be malleable depending on what they're going to execute. And so, for instance, in our world, when we go out and do a repair, uh, we'll charge for that repair in many of our branches. We have different levels um, because we have customers that do buying at different levels. And and so we charge different rates in our in our branches for like repair. And then, for instance, an installation or sometimes we have what's called a courtesy call. We wouldn't charge for those. And so which field when you were creating the work order would help drive that piece? Is that where you picked? repair versus some of the other things is that right okay yeah yeah because awesome. um uh, would you like me to go back no sure no I, okay. I mean i saw it i just wanted to confirm that that's part of what dro drives some of that mm -hmm. piece i don't want to yeah. get too into the details i just at a high level i was just kind of thinking through it so all right perfect. that's perfect yeah shannon you could configure it so that you know based on the selection of work order type then you know it'll put the correct billing for that you can have that all set up for you okay awesome. and, and in addition to that uh these price lists that you can also set um if, if you have even different billing for different customers um you know uh, customers with agreements with you and ones with not one-offs and all that uh, you can control that with price lists um, and also additionally you can have um, that run on the particular parts for instance if if you if you charge for parts and not for the installation or something like that yep. you, you can find a way of uh, dividing that on the price lists but also uh, control it on the progress of the work order um, in that if if it's closed then the billing kicks off for the parts and the service and whatever you you charge on that work order yep thank you awesome and Felix will give you a little bit of visual insight into that when he walks through a uh, work order 
Yeah. OK, thank you. Great. So what I'd like to be able to do, <clears throat> excuse me next, is be able to move to a mobile device, being my Android device, and be able to show you um, how to be able to create a work order from uh, while on the go. So it could be a CSR agent or account manager that needs to be able to do that while on site, or a technician. So if he's currently there for another uh, work order and there's something else that's been highlighted that needs to be corrected, he has that capability uh, from their mobile device. So I'm just going to change the visual and I'm going to share my Android. There we go. And here from the same perspective is I'm on my Android device and I have the Dynamics 365 uh, mobile app open. So um, from this perspective, again, I can access either application being the field service or the mobile service. Uh, uh, so I'm going to click on that because I do want to represent a technician that would be on site and who doesn't need to have all of that other stuff avail um, visible on his screen, but just a very concise um, application of what he needs to execute. So the same perspective on the left hand side with the little hamburger on top is I have all of that visibility to the core entities that I need to work with. So I can be able to see that and then same at the bottom I have that change order so I can be able to see from a field service perspective what's, in, what's what I need to see and then from any parts inventory purchasing that needs to be executed I can toggle between those two. So first off, just as I showed you on the uh, browser, is that plus sign in the upper right hand corner would give me that, that create functionality. So any core functionality that I need to be able to execute, I can be able to do from here. As well as the bottom hamburger on the bottom right hand corner that also gives you um, add capability with that new plus feature that's the third uh, icon showing. So I'm gonna do it from the quick create at the top right hand corner. And I'm gonna scroll down, I'm gonna create a new work order. And again, this is just a little bit more of a condensed version of that recorder summary. I'm going to indicate that it is an X-ray sensor. That needs to be replaced. I'm going to indicate that it is uh, PMHC again. And maybe the contact would have been um, maybe a hygienist or someone else within the facility. So I would be able to look at a different, be able to see any other contacts that are associated to this account. And again, there I'm starting to indicate what my primary incidents are. So I can indicate um, that it, it, basically it's going to be an installation repair. Uh, if there's any other information that you want to be able to identify, if it's against a certain asset of yours, you can't be able to associate that. Again, it's starting to pull based on that incident type what the estimated hours to complete would be and any other information that's important to you. So here I just click save. And now that work order um, has been initiated. So if I go back into that work order. And I'm going to be able to see now there's that new 43 uh, work order that's just been created and if there's any other information that I want to add say maybe a note or an image I could be able to click on that I'm going to scroll down and I will oops timeline I always think forget it's at the bottom I think it's, a, yeah, it's actually at the top so again just as I showed you I can be able to use the camera or the video icon on my device and be able to take a photo of that but what I've also done is I've already took a photo uh, a few minutes ago so I'm just going to use my gallery and I'm going to pull that sensor and attach that as well so that we can be able to indicate uh, maybe for ordering when I look at inventory I can be able to verify what the what the what the part is and maybe what the problem is and then associate that to inventory and look to see if I need to requisition anymore or be able to pull that from my truck. So again just as showed you um, on the browser any information that you want to like booking, characteristics, um, any information that you want to be able to add to this, I could be able to do so. One last thing I wanted to indicate is that the upper um, sector, the, the drop down. So again, I have it currently scheduled. As a technician, I could schedule that to myself if I'm able to report, repair that on site now. And um, the customer service agents, either through a dashboard or through a workflow, creating an activity for them, indicating that this has been added to my agenda. Maybe some other tasks might need to be moved around. Or it can stay in unscheduled, and then it would um, stay for it to be scheduled out at another day. Um, from a navigation or an execution point of view, is there anything else anyone would like to see 
from a mobile device before I hand this off to Felix. No? Okay. There's a lot of functionality um, that's available to you here. So if there's any other questions, feel free and uh, I can be able to give you a, a guided tour. Thanks, Deborah. My pleasure. Felix, you good? <laughs> yes, I am. He, uh, how'd the kids do in soccer last night? Um, uh, it was actually practice. Uh, they did well. Um, yeah, it, it's always, they're, they're eight year olds. Um, I coach <laughs> under eight. So <laughs> we usually have um, an hour and 15 minutes practice, but you can only have their attention for 45 minutes. And that's, <laughs> that's better than all that weight that I can provide. I say, Felix, I coach as well, and I coach adults. But it's a time span is the same. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's always amazing. <laughs> all right, I'm going to share my screen here. Um, all right. Uh, can you see my screen? We can. Thank you, Felix. Okay. All right. Okay. Sorry. <clears throat> okay. All right. Oh, I unplugged my cord. Sorry. That's why. I usually don't want to leave my phone plugged on <laughs> here. So this is a free simulator that I use. Um, again, it's uh, open source, but you never know what comes through open source. So if I'm not using it, I unplug it. All right. So let's go here. All right, it kicked in. <clears throat> yeah, so I'm using an Android. Um, I'm an Android guy. Not the fancy iPhone, <laughs> but uh, let me take everything off here, my screen, and let's try again here. So uh, what I'm going to go through um, is <clears throat> looking at the work order that was scheduled um, uh, by Deborah. Um, so what I'm going to go through is seeing um, or showing you how a technician will engage with this work order um, on site. Some of the things they'll be able to do um, will go into uh, if there needs to be some inventory transfer from the warehouse from one truck to the other. Um, we'll again switch gears um, and also look at the purchase order, purchase receipt kind of uh, capabilities that we have um, to that end. So, when our uh, I just reinstalled this app, so that's why it's lost a bit here. Yeah, <clears throat> so um, when I get in, maybe as a technician, um, I may just go straight to uh, the menu here. Maybe I want to look at the work orders that have been um, assigned to me. Again, um, if you have a bunch of technicians, you can pick and choose uh, you know what goes to everyone's queue, um, but if they are um, assigned uh, a work order, it will show up on on their mobile app when they sign in. Um, one thing I will have to uh, warn, because this is open source, there's a few pop-ups that will happen um, as I use my phone on a daily basis. But uh, we can see here that uh, uh, we have uh, PMHC. Um, that's a work order that was assigned uh, for me to go take care of. Um, you know, right away, I can review any of the information that I have on here. Um, I can tell that it's an X-ray sensory replacement. That's the work order summary over there. I can see the address. I can see who reported these. Um, I can see a number of, uh, you know, several aspects here, right, when it comes to um, everything I know I need to know about this work order. Um, I can look at the parts that have been assigned um, for me to use. Uh, I can see the services that we're going to charge, right? So if there's an installation fee, maybe it's a flat rate and there's a configuration fee, um, that kind of thing. Uh, there's also 
service tasks and maybe I can explain a little bit about what service tasks are. So this, this is just a guide. You don't necessarily need to have it on every work order, uh, but keep in mind you may have some technicians that, uh, you know, maybe struggle and, and it's on a daily basis. You know, people may just need some, you know, a little bit of guidance on what to do first and what to do next. So that's where service tasks come in, right? So here we have a pre-installation, they have to, pre to review the procedures, move on to the installation, test and validate. So um, it can be just that simple, right? <clears throat> so um, again, when I receive this, um, I will go straight to the booking. Um, remember, once a work order is scheduled, it creates a booking. Uh, a booking is simply, um, it, it takes all the information that's on the work order and ties in the resource that has to take care of that work order. So as an organization, you may pick and choose whether you want your technicians to work off the booking or the work order. But best case um, or best practice, we, we, we recommend them working off the booking, right? So down at the bottom here, um, I'll just go uh, click on booking um, right away if I'm on site or if I'm traveling, maybe I just got into my van, my truck, um, depending on whether my day starts at my house or at the shop or anywhere that I am, I could be on the road somewhere in Iowa and, you know, my desk starts because I'm I'm going west on going north or something like that so i start wherever my day starts right um so i can select traveling now what that does it updates the scheduling board back at you know the, the scheduler desk right because if the scheduler needs to know which technicians are traveling at this particular point in time she'll be able to know um just best of the the color of the of the uh, of the work orders back here, right? So just to make sure that I clear that, um, you know, if I get on site, I can change this to in progress. Again, that will um, reflect on the scheduling board. Again, this is best practice because you want to know um, travel time if you pay a different rate uh, for your technicians for travel time. Uh, they need to keep these statuses in check, right? Uh, they have to make sure that every time they have to change their status based on what they're doing um, because this feeds into billing, right? So the travel time, the, the work time, if they're on break, we have a scenario there, they can reflect that they're on break if you pay a different rate. So, all the time changes here, it keeps capturing time along the way until the work order is complete. So uh, moving on here, uh, work is in progress. Um, I may want to look at the customer here quick. Um, if I traveled, uh, you know, maybe seven miles to get there. Again, keep in mind that I have not been moving, but once I select travel, this will automatically start counting. Right. So if if um, if you have if they start their GPS, right, um, it will start counting the mileage. Um, again, we have a map here. We use Bing Maps uh, for our mapping capabilities. Uh, maybe actual time traveled. Um, right. I could say, you know, it took me probably uh, 58 minutes. Right. So. Uh, just as simple as that. Again, I will not click every single um, uh, field here, but we have provided a lot of data points, data capture points where, you know, anything you want to capture in terms of work order. Again, work orders can can run out of cost, right? Each time you roll that truck, you have a work order tied to it. Again, if you if you're not very um, if you're not very uh, uh, strict about the the happenings of that work order, uh, what's being charged, uh, how what's the travel distance, what's what's all this, you may end up losing money on each of those work orders. But 
again, <clears throat> I am now ready to take on the service. I get into my um, my 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 service tasks. Um, all I need to do is um, uh, once I once I start, um, I'm going to back up here a little bit. Um, I'm going to back up to service. Um, so the easiest way that technicians, again, we don't want to get into each of these service tasks, but all you should know is they are timed, right? So there's a, an estimated duration you can tie to each of these service tasks. Now, each of these, so the first one is 15 minutes, the other one is an hour and a half, and the last one is 15, 15 minutes. So as a technician, I can just come here, click mark complete. Now, it, that means it took me 15 minutes. Um, maybe um, it, keep in mind, it could take me uh, five minutes to do that job, right? Um, again, you want to keep your technicians um, honest about uh, work rate completion, right? So again, <laughs> as as crisp as they can get, all the happenings and interactions here flow into billing and they flow into reporting. So if you want to know which of your technicians are really good at doing their, doing their job, you would come and look at their work rate completion, right? So if a 15 minutes task, uh, let's take an example of this one hour and a half. Um, first of all, is this making sense? Is this all relevant to you guys? Um, am I just getting so much into the weeds? Um, maybe a little bit, maybe a little bit into the weeds, but okay, okay. Yeah. I think if you so, just uh, if you show some tasks of how you would do things, I think that's what they really want to see. And we're sitting about it's nine oh four right now, so we've got about twenty six more minutes. Okay, um, I'll Thanks. pull quick here. Um, so uh, again, uh, I can go in here, uh, mark complete. Um, if I have products that I need to consume, right? Um, again, we have uh, an Amban here, 100 is estimated. Once um, once a work order is, is created and scheduled, all the parts that are tied to that work order are defaulted to an estimated stage or status. Um, when I go in to consume that part, I'll go click on used. Again, depending on these three that were called on this work order, I may end up using um, maybe three but I can say, hey, we're going to bill for only two because uh, uh, because of scenarios that could be unforeseen, right? Maybe the one that um, I installed, the third one maybe got broken or uh, we, we're not going to charge uh, them for that because I have to come back maybe um, in a month to check on whether that, ac that actual piece is functional, right? So again, what I just did there is I changed the unban to used. Um, I can go ahead do the rest for do that for the rest of the products to make sure that they are in the used status as as I keep using them, right? So even that goes to the service as well. Uh, services will always be estimated by default. Um, I would say used. It kicks in the fifteen minutes that were defaulted for that specific um, service. Right. If I need to take a picture, um, I can go ahead uh, and take a picture and a timeline to show that a hey, this was installed and this is what it looked like when I installed it. Um, I can go ahead and take a picture. So that picture will be tied onto the work order um, service task. Um, and again, I can put some meaningful notes um, to make sure that Anybody that looks at this, either my supervisor knows what kind of work that I did. Um, by the way, you can also take video, right? So what you see over there, it's video. Again, this is also voice enabled. You can speak to it as well. Um, depending on what kind of empowerment you give your technicians, they can do uh, financial stuff here as well, give discounts and that kind of thing. So um, hey, Felix, that's super helpful, especially the video. I can think of an instance when I needed that. The um, what about seeing the service history of a client? Is it easy to go see the history? Mm -hmm. So, um, so again, that's tied to the account, right? 
Um, but what what you can do is you can bring in a subgrid. So you see this incident subgrid. Um, you can bring in a service history subgrid. Um, just an iframe i window or iframe window that shows all the interactions in terms of you know previous work orders, previous cases, all the previous engagements. Um, it's not out of the box put on the on the booking, um, but you can pull it. You know, uh, Deborah and team can through the implementation they can pull it over. Yeah, and so what, what what you're seeing right now, and we should have kind of teed this up, is that this is the out of the box, uh, yeah. you know, uh, um, field service application. But you definitely have the capabilities to configure this using point and click configuration to change the views, change the fields to how you see fit. As far as the history of the activities, you can always go to the account record and view all the history of of that account record. Um, mm -hmm. Also including things like emails, tasks, not just field uh, field work orders, but the whole history of that account record. And so you can even go in here and look at the customer, look at their account record, and see that view. And then when you need, if you need that view to be displayed in one of these, this is where field, um, Felix was mentioning, you could just grab that view and then place it on here on the form if you need to see that. Yeah. Well, we know, we know Burkhardt's focused on service, so you can even see their birthday if it's their birthday that day. So you can grab <laughs> right. it. Hey, uh, Felix, one other question. Let's say yep. that you get there and you're diagnosing that problem. You mm -hmm. know, oh yeah, I got that part in my van. How do you grab that part? And can you show us something like that? Yeah, sure. Yeah, okay. so right on, on this same screen here for products, I can go ahead quick here. Um, if I want to add a work order product, uh, again, <laughs> out of the box, we call it product, but you guys will change it to part, right? So our new work order part, I'll go in here. Um, select the part that I want. Maybe I need um, a 150 instead of a 100. Um, I'll go ahead and do that. Hey, I'm picking this from my truck. I'm driving truck number one today and I'll set, set it to allocate. Um, now, when I switch it to allocate um, or allocated, it will book and restrain anybody that's trying to take this part. Again, this usually happens for warehouse purposes, right? You, you want to book your parts so nobody can even tamper with them. Um, so it's just as simple as that. Again, uh, it's the same work order that I'm pulling in. I am the owner here. This is the part that I'm pulling in today, and I'm just going to save. If I want to take it as used right away, I'll just use it. And because it wasn't called on the work order, I need to reflect how many that I've used. Uh, boom. That's it. Yep. Shannon, did that help with your question, or is there other any other questions? Yeah, so that's helpful. Uh, now, now the opposite. Uh, I'm out there. I know I need something. I don't have it on my van. Mm -hmm. Now, what do I do? Yeah. So, if you don't have it on your van, um, again, one of the things you can do is what we usually see in the industry. You can call around other technicians that could be close. Maybe they have it in their van, and they can, you know, give you a, a piece. Uh, in that case, you will do a transfer from one van to the other. Um, the other uh, scenario, you can, you know, you can go ahead and create a purchase order, um, whereby. You know, you can create a purchase order, it gets approved by somebody, your supervisor or anything like that. And then those parts will show up at the warehouse and you can go pick them up. So can you show us, we want, we definitely want to see that piece. So a technician's out there, they're diagnosing this problem. Usually they, a lot of times they'll call a manufacturer, right? They call our manufacturers a lot for either maybe a tech support type call. Mm -hmm. and, and the tech support person will go, hey, you need part number one, two, three, four, five. And yep. the, tech will, the tech will then put that on, in our current world, the technician will put that on the work order. So you're saying the technician would do the same thing here. They would add this part to the work order out in the field. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So um, they can um, add, again, they can add this, that, that part, that specific part right away on the booking, right? If they don't have it at this point in time, again, I'm going to move you back to uh, where you can do an inventory, um, you know, transfer from um, from the van uh, to 
uh, and also keep in mind that I am moving away from the booking at this point in time to go and do inventory and purchasing. Now, if you want to surface these capabilities onto the booking, that's possible. Um, out of the box, we don't do that. Um, we don't have that set, but you can just bring the purchasing and inventory uh, subgrid onto the booking whereby they can self serve there. So I am going back to the main menu, moving to inventory. Uh, so I know that I don't have this part, but again, I can look into the inventory here. I can go, all right, I see that this unburned that I need uh, probably, let me say a uh, hundred, you know, the unburned a hundred. Um, I can tell that there is 38 quantity on hand at the main warehouse, right? Um, again, there's things that I can interact with here. Maybe I can go, oh, I know the, the reorder point for this. Maybe it's uh, eight or something like that, right? So um, not to get so much into the weeds, uh, but um, again, there's so much interaction that can happen here. Uh, so I know we have 38, so I'm I'm quite confident that if I need that, I can pick it from the warehouse. What I can do now is go uh, create a new. Uh, what I'm creating now is a. Oh, no, no, no. I need to get out because I was looking at inventory. Um, I now need to go to inventory transfer. Right. I've already proven that I have 38 at the main warehouse. So these are the uh, inventory transfers that I have currently, right? Um, I can just go ahead, create new. Uh, what I'm creating now is an inventory transfer. Um, I'm very confident I have these at the main warehouse and I'm moving them to my truck number one, right? Um, again, uh, I can put some notes here. Hey, I was out in the field and I realized I don't have this part, blah, blah, blah. Again, um, I can save this just for the meantime, then go ahead and tie a product to it. This is the product that I want. Uh, so again, um, I, I will kind of level set every time. I hope you don't get tired of hearing this. Um, I am moving, I had to save this transfer so I can add a product. Now, depending on how you want to do it, you can bring the product field right within here, right? So after selecting the source and destination, I go ahead, boom, I select my product, right? Maybe it's down here, right? It will just appear like that. Um, and you don't have to move to a different tab. Again, it's all in the configuration. You guys will be able to, this is like a, a box of Legos. We, we just give you a box of Legos and then you just move pieces wherever you want them uh, for, for consistency again um, and for ease of use. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead, add a product that I, um, that I want. Um, uh, so the product that I want is, uh, I'll go in here. Um, I need that armband 100. Um, I know the default value for that is that, and I need uh, maybe seven of them. I need to stack up a little bit because I know I have a few work orders down the road. Um, again, um, that is to see, it's as simple as that. Here is what I did: main house to my truck, and the product is um, is the armband 100. That's yeah, and Shannon, so within the solution, you can also create what we call business process um, flow. And so if this is a set process that you have where each step is, hey, when I do a transfer or I need to reorder, the, these are the fields that need to be captured and then you take it to the next step and next step and to streamline that, you can create that and apply that as well. And so that way it simplifies to the end users you know, this is all you need to fill out and just it kind of takes them through a step by step guide rather than having to learn where to flip everything and change everything. Again, what Felix was mentioning is you could definitely configure this um, and simplify it as much as you need. This is just how we have it set up out of the box. Does that make sense, Shannon?
<laughs> okay. Um, so again, um, um, keep in mind that you know there is billing and all that and journaling that happens in the back end when parts get moved, um, when when purchase order gets purchase orders get created. Um, I just wanted to let you know that you know you can also if you care about journals, um, you can go in look at the um, you know your inventory journal at, at any point in time. Again. Like I said, uh, it's a minus seven here. We're pulling parts from the main warehouse. If there's any um, purchase orders, purchase order receipts, allocations, uh, again, we're just looking at just this single journal entry that was entered. Um, usually the accounting department wants to uh, keep tabs on what's going on with parts moving around. Um, so switching gears, um, is there any questions on inventory transfer uh, journals and adjustments? Okay, take that. Felix, are we, hey Felix, it's Josh. Are we going to be able to see some of the um, some of the same things you just showed us on the uh, desktop application as far yeah. as purchase orders and inventory? Okay. Mm -hmm. I can do that. Yeah, I can do that. So uh, moving on, switching gears to purchasing um, again. Um, uh, keep in mind uh, again, <laughs> the, the, the the implementation, you know, you will just draw where you need all these things. So purchase orders can be brought onto the booking with a single click. Create purchase order for this product. I don't have it, uh, but now I have to move out and go to purchasing. So purchase orders, uh, very simple. Um, here is a few that I've created over time. Um, again, I can jump into any of these. Uh, maybe the unbanned um, uh, 100. I ordered some a while ago. Five were brought in, um, and it's pending receiving in and all that. Um, but what I need now is to create a, a new purchase order. Again, that's very easy down here. Uh, create purchase order. Uh, I want to put the product that I need to buy. Maybe I need to buy uh, some of these Mestro 100s. Um, um, so I'll go ahead, pick that, um, and then set the quantity. Um, maybe I need uh, 19 of those, right? Or 90. Um, okay. Um, I can go ahead and uh, associate this to a uh, specific work order. Ah, oh, no, warehouse. Uh, maybe, let me say, I want this associated to my truck. I want these associated to a work order that I'm working on now. Uh, the booking, I don't really um, uh, care about that yet. Um, okay. Um, and I can say, okay, well, the customer that I am Working on here. Um, uh, let me just take this uh, just for the sake of it. Um, description. I can put some notes here. Hey, I'm getting this part just for um, you know safety reasons, right? Um, I don't want to run out. Um, uh, OS. Actually, uh, I need this part. Um, so I'll go ahead. Uh, it's all received. It's all created. The purchase order is created right now. Um, I can put an expected date, right? Um, can I expect these on Monday? Again, <laughs> this is just uh, if I'm creating the purchase order, maybe I'm I'm calling. Hey, I'm calling uh, one of our suppliers, one of our vendors, and they give me a debt, an expected debt. So I may want to put these maybe for the warehouse guys, um, so they can look out for it. Uh, I have a guy that I work with closely at the dock, um, and I need him to look out for these um, on the 16th, right? So again, associated to all those work orders and bookings and all that, I can even take a picture of that so they know exactly what will appear at the dock. Um, so many things can happen here. So moving on. Uh, the receiving guy at the docking station, right? Um, this these parts show up. Just looks up the partner number, right? He just looks up the people. He goes, oh, okay. Well, I know these. 
these are Felix's. Um, all he will do is go to related, enter product receipt um, to receive these parts in. And new product receipt. Um, so here's the product receipt. Um, we can just say uh, Felix uh, parts, right? Um, okay. Uh, We'll go ahead and we can pick the the work order that um, the, the purchase order that he uh, set there and then we can go ahead and select that. Um, so the uh, order billing, you can set that as well. Um, I don't want to click so many places here, but uh, it's a quantity of 90 that was set. Again, that jumps in right by default, uh, maybe only 60 showed up as a warehouse guy i'll only receive in 60 that showed up now on the purchase order um tracking that i have it will show that there's 30 that didn't come in only 60 were received in so any questions there okay all right so uh um again um Keep in mind that, um, again, these business process flows, like uh, Rich said, um, if you want to control uh, everything that I've gone through in terms of a guide, guided process for your technicians, for your warehouse guys, for your parts guys, um, there is a way to bring that in. And I'll kind of show how that looks like on the on the mobile, rather on the on the browser. So uh, switching gears now uh, to the browser because of time, um, I will go ahead and uh, so uh, Josh and team. Um, so for browser purposes, we have the mobile and we also have the desktop, um, you know, all uh, like end to end. Which one do you want to look at? Let, let's uh, look at the desktop. Okay. P Felix, and uh, just to call it, we've got about six minutes left. So sure. I wasn't sure if, how, how long that would take you if we wanted to have time for questions at the end. Uh, it, I'll, I'll just run through it, maybe three minutes. Okay, let me start here. Perfect. So, yeah. <laughs> so uh, for inventory uh, purposes, again, I'll just switch the tab here. Um, we have some inventory transfers here, main, main house track. Uh, and all that. We have RMAs, if you track those, right? Uh, we have RTVs, um, RMA receipts, um, warehouse, if you want to look at. Again, we, we count trucks as extensions of the warehouse um, because they will carry parts over time and these adjustments, transfers, and all that that happen in this truck. So we, we kind of regard them as an extension of the warehouse. Uh, product inventory. Again, um, you can slice and dice this, uh, however you you see fit. Again, for inventory, I can throw it on a graph and that kind of thing. Uh, purchase orders, very easy here as well. Um, I, I may want to show this, a hey, pull up. Uh, okay, I don't have any graph there, but I can jump in here quick and show you one of the purchase orders that is um, so this is the business process flow that we were talking about. Um, this is kind of, um, we, we we don't enable it by default uh, for mobile functionality. Uh, we keep it for desktop and mobile tablet screens. Uh, but this is the business process flow concept that Rich kind of alluded to. So uh, for purchase orders here, um, Again, when a purchase order is created, it can be a status of submitted. Um, then it goes through, uh, you know, you have to flag the work order that's tied to um, where it's coming in, and then you drive it through a, 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 a well regimented process whereby if there's approvals that need to be done at this point in time, you know, the parts manager needs to approve these parts coming in. They, there's a workflow that can be sent right uh, at this point in time and he can receive an email that hey there's a parts approval that you need to go through 
Um, once he approves, um, it will be time now to move on to the submitting of the purchase order. Um, once the purchase order is submitted, again, the next stage is to receive in the parts that came in. So I'm just going to go here. Um, maybe this is the warehouse interaction. Um, I'm receiving in these parts. Um, uh, Felix is uh, emergency parts, right? Um, come in here, they were shipped uh, via FedEx, FedEx or whatever it is, uh, received in by by somebody, right? Um, I'll not take any time there. Uh, product receipt, um, I'll go ahead uh, and create the receipt here, show the parts that have been received in, um, and then I can move on again. It's it's a well regimented process um, to keep people in check to make sure nothing falls through the cracks. Um, hey Felix, sorry, we have about two minutes left. There's some okay. there's some questions in here on the on the chat window that we should address. Okay, I was watching that. Uh, let's uh, I think we can set the questions. I think one of them is, is can you adjust the purchase price on the per, on the purchase order? Uh, yes, you can. Uh, by default, it's locked. Um, if you don't have a permission to do a, to do that, again, many of these things, anything is changeable in the field. It's only permissions and privilege that will determine who can do it. Um, by by default, you see these keys at some fields, so that means it's locked. Somebody yep. doesn't have access. Yep. And Roxanne has a question around notifications. So definitely notifications can be set off automatically via workflows. So you can have, um, you know, as soon as a certain stage or a field is adjusted, workflows can fire off an alert in many different ways, whether it's a task or email or um, other, you know, SMS or things, things of that nature. So mm -hmm. definitely that's available for you. Yep. Felix, did you get through what you needed to show? Uh, yes, I did. Um, okay. I, I, yeah. I did. Josh, was and, uh, there anything else uh, left that you wanted to see there on the desktop? Um, I want to open that up to the the Burkhart team. I I saw what I was expecting to see, but um, you know, service coordinators, Roxanne, Janelle, is there anything more you were hoping to see on the desktop view there? What's your deepest, darkest desire you want to see on field service? Um, how it's built. How it's built? Or how, to build? how do we feel? Oh, okay. In invoicing. Got yeah. It. And how things can be adjusted, like time or cost. Yeah. Yeah. So all that, um, there's a sales component uh, that's tied to, um, again, if you, if you are dealing with the financial side of all these, um, aspects on field service we have a fully fridged um uh you know business like front uh front uh front office kind of scenario you know features or functionality right or capabilities i'm calling them feature functionality but capabilities right so the coding um again if there's some quotes that need to be sent out that can be managed here um if there's orders that are you know, sent to some of your vendors, uh, invoices, and all that uh, can be handled on, on this front end, right? Um, if there's any service agreements that are tied to that, um, you know, confirming invoices, uh, how invoices get paid, and all that, um, it, it, it's all available. Um, it's, it's a little bit... Um, it's it's a time thing. <laughs> I would have gone through like out a, uh, a time when you receive a lead to when you nurture that lead, you do business with them, you create a work order, you close the work order, you do invoice, and all that. So you know that is all available um, in here. So Felix, can I can I be a little bit more specific, maybe? And Janelle, let, let me know if I'm getting this wrong. I think what they're what we're wanting to make sure we have access to is when a work order is completed, all the parts are 
used, all the labor is recorded, and yep. it's time to book, or, uh, book's the wrong word, but it's time to close that work order completely so that we charge the client. Um, yep. They are able to go in line item by line item and make adjustments either to hours charged, cost of parts, et cetera. Yes, they can be able to do that. Yep. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Sorry. Um, yeah, you can be able to do that. Um, yep. And um, so th those numbers are pushed onto the accounting side. Um, you know, once the work order is closed and complete. Um, so. And is there a specific area, let's say we want to create a specific area to show, you know, just our completed orders. So we have our service coordinators that are, or even myself, that are looking at all orders that are closed and actually ready to bill. Is this the area that we would look so we can maybe pick out specific ones that stand out, make adjustments from there, or go ahead and just close them from the board and they'll go to invoicing? Um, you can do it either through here. So this is just a view. Again, you can filter through and focus more on those that, um, you know, given the, the status they are in, right? Whether they are, um, whether they are uh, closed um, or still open or scheduled. Yes, you can do it over here, right? Or you can move over to, you can create a view. Um, so right over here, you can create a view for all closed and posted and focus on those and adjust those um, through here. One thing that I'll mention now is, I don't know if you, um, I'm assuming you, you could be familiar with Excel. There's an Excel integration to here if you, if you want to massively change them. Um, so you can push that listing to Excel, go in and change the time, right? The hours, maybe um, if there's a field here for hours, maybe you want to change the hours for all these work orders to, you know, maybe they spent two hours. Um, you can go in here, change all of them. Uh, uh, I'll just change this just to show you how that works. I can go ahead and change that and then push this back into um, once I save here, it will tell me that my changes have been pushed back into Dynamics 365. That's one way you can massively change um, on a large scale. Yeah. But yeah, another thing you can turn on for a time saver is that in this view that Felix is showing, you can turn on inline editing. And what that allows you to do is you can actually just make the edit directly in this view as well. And you can turn that feature on. Yeah. I don't have mine turned on yet, but you can do that as well. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. Did that well, your thanks. question? Did I answer your questions there? Yeah, yes, thank you. thank you. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah, and 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 by the way, keep in mind that you can create a number of reports, right? Um, so here I I just have some for cases, right? But these cases could be it's the same concept for work orders. So you can come in here, look at neglected work orders. Let's keep in mind that you know this could be you know neglected work orders, um, work orders that have activities on them. Um, I'm just going to pull up one here. Um, you know, th there is even nicer reports that you can build to show, hey, where is our overtime mostly coming from? Is it from one person? Is it from a specific kind of work order? It can give you percentages, numbers, and all that. You can save this as a PDF. Um, what document you can print it out you can email it to somebody um, so reports again are very flexible and and also keep in mind that you can have uh, all those aspects showing up on a dashboard right so 
you can if you're hoping to use power bi um, there's great dashboards um, to that end that can show you some crisp numbers um, and, and that kind of stuff yep so and to that point sorry felix i've already just in the chat window i've inserted a, a a snippet from the dashboard that's currently available out of the box to you that is a power bi dashboard that uh, felix was just showing that's available on the application mm -hmm. just as a sample yeah and i like felix i like your um story about this is just really legos i mean it comes already assembled and then you can just move the blocks around and take the blocks out and we're kind of showing you everything but we can simplify it down so that you know the field uh, service techs they just get to see what they need to do and it just walks them through bam 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 right yep. that's all they that's all they get that's all they need and lets you guys decide you want to add more or you can just quickly and easily add you know additional fields or functionality to the to the tool set the other great thing is is that this is part of that larger platform so it extends you know as as burkhardt wants to bring on marketing and other things it all ties together so you don't have to put this all into different systems. Um, it kind of naturally flows all the way out through this base CRM platform. So Dan, I have a question. Since you mentioned that we can modify it, you know, since we want to be able to uh, adapt the process through continuous improvement, is it configurable or is it coding to be able to make some changes if we want to add or eliminate a field, for example, to streamline what the field service technician is going to do? It's a great question. Uh, Felix, I'll let you take it because you're the... Uh, I, would, you're the I would say, sorry, Michelle, so most of it is all, um, you know, point and click configuration from an admin side, right? If you need to add a new field or a form or even a new record um, or even workflows to streamline stuff in that matter, um, it's point and click. But there's always a component where, you know, if you need to go beyond what we provide as far as point and click, you have the ability to extend that with code. But we are moving away from code dependent and really focusing on more of a point and click up to, let's say, you know, 60, 70 percent. And if there's 30% needed to be extended, you can definitely have that as well. And, and on top of that, Michelle, there's a um, app store. So similar like your iPhone where you go to the app store and you can download an app, um, they have that as available. So if there is like kind of functionality that isn't included and we can't configure it, we first look to see if we can add that through kind of a pre-approved, you know, third party ISV. But the nice part is, is that it just, downloads and fits in there's no real integrations you have to do exactly okay. yeah thank you you bet well we're uh, at a dan and team real quick this is roxana i have a question to tag along uh with what michelle said uh just wondering on all the point and clicks uh is there a way to configure it so it's a more uh, graphical uh, user interface, so like, you know, have a, a good GUI that goes along with it. So it's uh, folks that trigger on graphics more than, uh, you know, just a lot of words lined up. Uh, how, how does that look? that be configured yeah. to? 100%. So within yep. the buttons, there's also options or controls. So things like um, ratings, for instance, if you wanted to make it into a, you know, like a five star um, versus actual numeric field. Um, you have button controls that can control the different layout of the field. So based on numbers, it could be, you know, like a, a chart range that shows up in display. So those are all available as well. Mm -hmm. And that's all point and click. Yeah. So just to add on to that too, we, we did some work years ago for Marriott. It turns out that a uh, large majority of Marriott's workforce is illiterate or at least doesn't speak English. And so it all had to be kind of graphical images so that they could click inventory and do things and work work that way but also on the other end um, there are keyboard equivalents for this so that if you don't want to have to use a mouse and you just want to tab through it we can align things that fall into your kind of workflow so that they can eliminate the clicks and eliminate the steps and kind of drive out the waste and speed up the transaction mm -hmm. okay thank you you bet Any other desires, uh, outcomes that you want to have? Anything you didn't see, you want to see? And and we're happy if you think of something over the weekend or later today, just email me and we can 
do a little video and send it back to you. Yeah, thanks, Dan. Yeah, folks, if you have something that comes up, send it my way, and I'll make sure that Dan and the Encore team get that. All right. Well, if not, I'm going to stop the recording, and everyone have a great weekend. Enjoy your weekend, and um, feel free to reach out if you have any other questions. Deborah, Felix, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Appreciate your work. Yeah, My you're pleasure. welcome. Have a great yeah. weekend, have a nice everyone. Weekend. Josh, yeah, thanks, everyone. Cheers. Thanks, Thanks for the demo. You bet.